quiet summer day, and my mother and I were going out to get groceries. We got in the car and started driving down Washington Street. Um, the windows were down because it was very hot, and I thought I heard fire, firecrackers. And I told my mom, Mom, do you hear that the firecrackers are starting early this year? It wasn't yet for the July. And my mother turned to me, she goes, oh, I don't think those are fireworks, or firecrackers, same thing. <laughs> and um, I just looked at her, I was like, okay, but there, there actually are firecrackers. And we continued down Washington Street, past the KFC, past the library. And um, in the middle of the road, a woman just starts, she charges to her car, and my mom stops, and she starts banging on the window, and she goes, call the police, call the police. And my mom's like, we're stuck in traffic right now. The car's everywhere. And my mom pulls out her cell phone and calls the police. And we're sitting, we're like, I don't know what's going on. And afterwards, cars start driving again, and my mom's driving the street. We come to a red light by the, um, by the Rock's I mean, by the Dorchester Ryan's Yeah. And I look to my left, and I see a corner store. And I see a lot of people coming in and out, and by it, on the floor, with a man sitting. But all over his clothes was blood, and he was looking up to the sky. And when we were sitting in the car, I looked, and I saw that his eyes were rolling back over and over again. And it would roll back once, come back again, and roll back. And after a minute or so, it just stopped. So that was the first time I had seen someone die before my eyes. And we sat there at the light until the police came, and then we just drove off. We pulled into the parking lot of Shaw's because we were going to get groceries. And we sat there for about 10 minutes, and my mom looked at me and she said, um, life is fleeting. There's something along those lines. I don't remember because I was in shock. Um, after that, she looked at me, patted me on the back, and we went to go get groceries. What we ask you to do is to tell something you like about a story, ask any questions that you might have to help the help you understand the story better or to help the teller find more details that would help you understand the story better. And then give a suggestion if you have a positive suggestion like I would like to hear more of blah blah something like that. So just tell her something that you like. Yeah, and it's like in my head now. <laughs> no, 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 that's, that's a good thing to do. I wanted to tell how you, you really had you built up the sort of, uh, the setup was like, oh, it's a nice day, my mother and driving, the windows are open, and then someone runs out into the street and so you don't really know what that's about yet, and it just kind of builds to the point where you just turn and look and see that. So it's very good. But it had that whole, you know, like that whole big arc of life is fleeting. And then, and then we go on to my grocery shop. It's very nice. So any other comments? So uh, this play that takes place uh, a number of years ago, uh, it's about 12 years old, and it was the summer. Uh, I used to go to this sleepway camp called Northwoods, and it was out in, I believe, New Hampshire. Uh, so one night, they take us out to the field, and it's overlooking this nice big lake, and it's just surrounded by woods, and they sit us all down. They say, all right, so tonight, we're going to play a game. And this game is Find the Counselor, which we all figured out was a glorified hide and go seek. Most of the counselors had hidden around the campus, and we had to find them. Most of three. So I was with Jesse and Paul. And looking around, it was about dusk, so you could still kind of see everything, but it was all out loud. You know, you couldn't really make out any details, so it was going to be hard. So Jesse and Paul and I, we set out, we start looking through, and in that darkness, we just noticed some lights. And they're really colorful, which is kind of odd in the middle of the woods. So we go further, we investigate, and we see it's the recreation center, which connected the guy's side and the girl's side. You know as well? That's interesting. We go further. The rec center is completely decked out. Halloween decorations, colors, sounds, we hear music playing. What is this? And the camp decided that it was a good idea not to tell the guys that there was a girl's dance floor. So we walk over and we notice a couple of girls wearing really nothing but swimsuits covered in fluorescent paint. And they notice us. 
But we say, dude, girls! Of course, I don't something like this. This happened. So we go over and they dance with us. They touch us. They paint us. It's great. And then we think, we should probably get back. So we walk through and then we look at each other and we're covered in fluorescent paint. All colors. Like, that's okay. So we dash down to the lake. Running through the trees, we get scratched, cut, so we're covered with blood now as well. We jump in, and we can't really wash off the paint. It doesn't wash off that well. So we walk up to where the assembly is meeting back. Some room is one, covered in paint, blood, and now we're completely soaked. And we sit down, and the counselor walks up and says, so it's come to our attention that some of you have found the girls' dance. Now, we can't really approve of this behavior, so on and so forth, and they gave us a lecture. But I think what they noticed most about us was not the paint, blood, and water, but that we just couldn't stop running for the rest of the <laughs> <laughs> that was good. And he did that with his pacing, right? His facial expression, right? So you really got it. Dude, it's girl! <laughs> okay, so this was a very break of last year. So, some people's hobbies, you know, they'll collect cars and play sports, but me and my friend Randy would like to go around and sneak on top of the roofs. <laughs> so, <laughs> there was Christmas break, like the day after Christmas. Ramsey sleeps over, but actually we slip some pillows underneath my blankets to look, make a little dummy in case my mom opens the door. So, after we put our little dummy in place, we sneak outside and we run down to Center Street and we see the church. We're like, yeah, you know, tonight we're finally going to get on top of them for the church. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be So, <laughs> we look at the church and, you know, there's snow all around, but, you know, luckily there's no snow on top of them for the church. So, you know, so we go over the shed, climb on top of the shed, you know, we use the old trick. Ramsey uses his height, he boosts me up. And then I put my ankle, I catch it on the, the little peak of the roof, and then I reach down and pull him up. Because you know, I'm a short guy. I got the muscle, he's got the height, he's got a little thing going on. So, once we get on top of the shed, then we, we crawl up. You know, this part's slow, so it's really dangerous. We go hang and crawl up. Finally, we get to the very top, and we're like, wow, you know, look at this. You can see the whole center street, you know, all the shops, and it's like 11 o'clock, so all the lights are off, it's really cool, you know, the moon is out. So then we just start to sit there and move. Then we turn and we, we see a big stained glass window with the Virgin Mary on it. And we're just like, wow. You know, no one ever gets to see this up close, because everyone who sees this, you know, they're in the church down in the pew. 25 feet down, this is really cool. So, you know, we start to like, you know, get comfortable, you know. We try to pretend we're not nervous because we want to like, oh yeah, you know. <laughs> <laughs> we would never admit to the other guy that we were scared, even though we were. But we finally started to get comfortable and we forgot we were on the roof. So, we're getting up, kind of, you know, checking out the stained glass window, running our hands across it, and then all of a sudden, <laughs> Looking around, and you know, we see this guy, and he's hauling down the sidewalk in his boots, and we're like, oh crap, you know, if we try to go back the way we came, it's going to take like 10 minutes, he'll be like, honest. So, we go back down to the shed, we're, we're climbing down, and I'm saying, oh, we're never going to get down in time. So finally, we just look, we see a snow bank, and we dove right into it. And then we just ran straight up the street, and you know, finally we get away, and the guy's screaming behind us. And we're just walking like, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> then we walked in a couple minutes of silence and finally I turned to Ramsey and I was like, that was cool. <laughs> <laughs> and then he nodded and we went to bed. <laughs> you have a narrative, but there's also who you are. And you can still 
step out of that, that's the, the beauty of not having a fourth wall. It's like, and I'm talking to you, so like I was feeling this, or I was thinking that, you know. It's really um, a nice blend of the oral narrative plus the real personal connection. Great. I also like the way he did that with the words so that it actually enhanced the words. You didn't have to like walk in the line. You could just be imagining it while he's saying it, while he's doing it. That's a really important part of the story. Um, I felt that he really, he really engaged the audience right away by telling us like some people's hobbies are this, some people's are that. Like it was almost like you, I could tell you looked around like you may do this, you may do that, but I climb roofs. <laughs> <laughs> and you engaged us right away. It was really great. So we're good. Yeah. Okay. Thanks for